So you want to get faster, you're in the right spot. I'm Jason, the head coach of Strength Running, and I want to help you become a faster runner. And in this video, I want to give you the three S's of low risk improvement. Now, we can improve by jacking up your mileage to 100 miles a week, start running brutally hard workouts twice a week. You know, there's a lot of things that we can do that would stress your body and then prompt an adaptation that would then make you into a better runner. But the real question is, how do we do that in a safe way? Because if you've been running 10 miles for a long run, and now I have you go do a 16 mile long run, you're probably going to get hurt. Just like if you jump up your weekly mileage too quickly, or if you start doing really hard workouts before you're ready for it. So what I wanna do in this video is talk about low risk ways of getting faster and a, a step process of doing so. So if you're hitting a plateau, if your performances have stagnated, or if you're a new runner and you're not really sure what to do with your training, this will give you some ideas on what to focus on now and what to wait a little bit to focus on so that you can get as much improvement right now with as little risk as possible. Build up your capabilities, build up your strength, build up your capacity for training so that then you can make some more challenging, riskier decisions when you're ready for it. All right, so you wanna get fast, but you're not sure where to start. I want this video to really be for the runners who are starting with a little bit of a clean slate. Maybe you've just taken some time off from running. Maybe you've just started running. And I think it is super helpful to think about these three S's. Skills, stamina, and strength. If you work on these three skills, then you will be working on the capacity for more training in the future while also prioritizing your improvement right now. So let's get started with the first S, skills. What do I mean by skills? So skills are really two different things. There's number one, the skill of running, and then there's also the skill of training. Let's start with the skill of running first. The skill of running is really running form. Are you running with proper technique? And there's a couple ways to really work on this skill as you are going through the training process. We don't have to actively manage how we're running when we're out there running. So we shouldn't be trying to change our running form consciously. Instead, we should do certain things that improve our running form subconsciously. So a few things are, number one, hills. If you run a lot of hills, you're gonna develop more strength and more capability, more uh, better running form, and you don't have to do formal hill workouts. I think those are valuable and probably more valuable than say just running a lot of hilly terrain on your easy run days, but both are helpful. And I think if you combine some easy hill running with some formal hill workouts, you're getting a lot of great strength benefits. You're, you're working on your mechanics. After all, it's really hard to run with poor sloppy form uphill. And these workouts will also help you get faster and improve. And also the injury risk of running hills is a lot lower. So hills provide a lot of what we're looking for in this moment in time when we are trying to improve yet keep our risks really low. Another thing that we can incorporate into our training are strides. About 100 meter accelerations where you get up to about 95 or 98% of your max speed but you only hold that for about two seconds, you coast to a stop, they're really not very difficult. And what I love about strides is that it's a way to practice running fast without making that fast running hard. So it's a little bit of fast running just to reinforce good mechanics, to really help you reinforce proper running technique, not only into your muscles, but also your brain. This is a neuromuscular type of activity and it does require a lot of coordination. And so that's what we're doing. We're practicing the skill of running by running fast regularly, by running up hills, both at an easy effort and then also at a you know faster workout effort. And then the other thing that we can do is incorporate some form drills into our training. And these are really great with helping you warm up for a run. They can be phenomenal with uh, working on aspects of coordination so that you, know, you can move more athletically and more fluently. And they just help you build more coordination. So these things are the skill, skill, the skill of running. You know, this is your running form. This is you being able to run economically. Now, the skill of training is being process oriented. It's, 
Are you warming up for every run? Are you doing some strength training? Are you running at an easy effort for most of your runs? Uh, is the beginning of your run done at an easy effort, no matter what kind of run it is, just to help that warm up process along? So there's a lot of things that we can do to get good at the skill of training, but we must practice it regularly. And when you're just starting out, or you know, if you're just coming back to running after a long break, it's a perfect time to do that. Now, the next S in our three S's of low risk improvement is strength. Now, the easiest way to get strong is to do some strength training. Now, if we further want to reduce the risk of strength training, if you're someone who's just very prone to injury, then there's a couple things we can do. Number one, let's avoid any plyometrics. These are explosive, very plyometric movements that just by their very nature have a high injury risk. So we can skip the plyos and instead do mostly body weight exercises. If you can get into a gym, if you know good lifting form, then I think that is even better. But the risk of lifting heavier weights, if you are throwing around an implement that weighs as much as you do, obviously the risk of injury is higher than if you're simply manipulating your body weight on the floor in the living room. So the strength component is really uh, important here because it almost does a lot of different things. It reinforces uh, proper running form because stronger runners typically have better form. So we're, we're almost working on a skill by working on strength. And then for injury prevention reasons, strength is probably the number two most important thing in your training that is going to contribute to you staying healthy besides just training properly. And runners who can incorporate strength training into their training are gonna have a lower injury risk. They're probably gonna be more economical runners. And at the end of a race, the end of a workout where you're trying to dig deep and kick, you're probably gonna be a faster runner too. Next, there's stamina or endurance, but I wanted three S's, so we're gonna go with stamina. Now, when we're working on endurance, Notice that we're not working on VO2 max. Notice we're not working on any of those high-end metrics of performance. Instead, we're simply working on our ability to have some general endurance. And we can accomplish this through a lot of easy running. So gradually increasing the overall distance that we're covering every week with our weekly mileage is going to be how we accomplish this particular goal. Another way to do it is just to be very consistent with our long run. I think a long run is, is probably one of the more important workouts that runners do during the week. And most runners would be very well served to do a long run almost every single weekend. So if you're not trying to run more, if you're not being consistent with the long run, then these are very low risk ways of building your stamina and your endurance so that you can get better. And when you combine all these three, when you're working on your running form with strides and drills and hills, when you're working on getting stronger with hills and strength training, and then also when you're working on your general endurance by trying to run a little bit more and being consistent with the long run, you are creating an amazing environment in which to get better. You're getting stronger, you're getting more economical, and you're building endurance. It's a win-win-win and you're not doing a lot of the higher risk things in training that are gonna to lead to injuries, things like hard workouts. Now, do I mean not do any hard workouts? No, of course not. We talked about hills. I think hills are important in this regard, particularly because of their injury prevention benefits. A big goal of this video is to present low risk ways of improvement. And so when you're running uphill, there's less impact force and also you're gaining some strength in addition to the cardiovascular benefits of that kind of a hill workout. So there's some really great things to love about hills. They really cover a lot. And this three-pronged approach to improvement prioritizes the safest ways to get better while really kind of stepping back from the more challenging, uh, riskier things to do in your training that will lead to improvement. So if you're an injured runner, or you're starting with a clean slate, you're a beginner, you just took a lot of time off, now is the time to focus on these three S's. They're gonna help you get stronger, build more endurance, become more economical, all in a way that is not going to dramatically increase your injury risk. So I hope this was helpful for you, and if you have any running friends that might be injury prone or just can't really seem to get their training together because they fall off the wagon, 
Send them this video, and I hope it's helpful for them as well.